Hmm. Just as um, it's a long, broad subject and lots of speculation, but did Hitler escape to Argentina, in your opinion? I think he did. It's very likely, isn't it? Uh, I think that's what the Wonder Weapon was. The Wonder Weapon was the Witch King escaping. And we all know the date that Hitler vanished. It was April 30th, 1945, Val Purchase night. Well, the there you go. When the, witch, the demon kings take flight. Oh, my God. <laughs> wow. I told you it was an amazing subject. Oh, it but is, you yeah. You just, you just, you literally have, you literally, you have your jaw hitting the floor, and I haven't even scratched the surface. Well, are you, are you disappointed by the History Channel's um, SS occult documentaries? Not particularly. I think the BBC did a good one once, I think. But I think they're not bad. It talks they, about... Again, again, they dehumanise them. You know, and the SS were not a particularly nice organisation, but at the same time, too, <laughs> they never go into details of why it worked. Yeah. And that's what interests right. me. Right. Why did it work? They just portrayed them as stupid German idiot robots who were easily mind-controlled. That's not, that is so far from the truth. These were... This, was, this has been a centuries, if not millennia, old project to bring them to that state. Well, his um, SS leader, Heinrich Himmler, in his castle, the castle that they ran, yeah. had yeah. Um, the Knights of the Round Table set up and these various niches in the wall and the statues were never put in there. It's apparently, it's not known what statues were going to be in there, uh, what, what, um, what um, sculptors sculptors would be in these niches but again merlin and the round table etc they, they took quite an interest in that didn't they yeah you know, it just goes on and on it's just like i said it's a, it's it's a, it's an incredible subject uh it you know, just, <laughs> because for the first time in history we got to see what our, re our leaders are really like and they're all basically black magicians yeah exactly Exactly. I, it I know the Germans, Russians, Soviets, Bolsheviks, yeah. Democrats, Labour, Tory, Sinn Féin, they're all the same uh, black sorcerers playing on our minds. They are witches. The men are witches. The women are witches. Um, warlocks, yep. Warlocks and witches, yeah. Yep. I met somebody who claimed to be a warlock once and he, he, he ticked every box in your psychopathic list. Well, that's what happens. I said with Hitler, he didn't. He, he shows no signs or no indication of being a psychopath when he was growing up. But he became, I believe, he became possessed. This is what happened. What happened to him happened to Frederick II. That's why I went back to that story again. The pollution, the shock doctrine of the the Germanic bloodlines to infuse it with the the terror and the traumas that were unleashed and saturated with into it. Now, throughout throughout the ages, then, throughout the ages, um, it reminds me of the quote, um, throughout the ages, light was your weapon, and you struck at the darkness each time. How did these Teutonic Knights of old, right up to World War Two and the modern day, how do they rationalise that, um, in your opinion, how, how would they rationalise that the, the Germanic race was particularly special. How did that arise? Why wasn't it Belgium or Argentina or, or France? Well, they believed the Aryan race was, uh, and that meant the, the white Nordic Europeans. That would have been the Saxons, the Teutons, the Goths, the Visigoths, you're talking about the Italians, you're talking about the Greeks and the Romans, you're talking about the Iberians, the Gaels, the Irish, the Scots, the Anglo-Saxons. And the Nordics, that would have been the, the there would have been all those races would have been considered to be the master race because they had the blood that went right back to the beginning of the creation of the world, which they believed through the magical orders happened when the Aryan race in Tibet. This yeah. is why the Nazis were fascinated by Shrine It goes back to India and Tibet, doesn't it? Air, yeah, Aryan. Think, yeah, that's, that's why the swastika was used, because uh, well, they, they, there's, there's so much interesting history there. I mean, Thor, the god, the Nordic god of thunder, is Donar in the Teutons. The same thing he strikes with a hammer is also uh, Indra in the Vedic tradition, the Hindus. 
so they they use the kind of a uh, an anthropological cultural conduit to bring them all back to Tibet. They believe that the Aryans who were they, they literally believe the Burilia story was true, that the Aryans emerged from a tunnel in Tibet and moved across into Europe, and that's what you, me, Northern Europeans, Southern Europe, Western Europeans are. They did not apply the same criteria to the Slavs. They said that they were had been polluted by Eastern blood. Now a lot of that came from sort of like psych, uh, psychological leftovers, uh, psychiatric leftovers from the likes of the uh, the Frederick Barbarossa and the Teutonic Knights who invaded, who, who went into. Poland and places like that. And then Hitler, when he invades Russia, he calls it Operation Barbarossa. Barbarossa. Exactly, because it was going back. You see, the, the Hitler and the Nazis are only interested in the East. They were interested in nothing else. They were not interested in any in invading any other country. Their, their business was purely with the East. In fact, so much so that although the British make an enormous deal out of the Battle of Britain, that was only a sideshow. Mm -hmm. The main the operation, the main, the main war was in the east, and you know, although that was considered a great victory and portrayed as such by another Romano-Prussian aristocrat called Churchill, it really wasn't. Freemason, yeah. It was a, it was a sideshow. It was yeah. a sideshow. The main theater of conflict was in the east in Russia. And, and would this was, been would would this been um, foremost in Napoleon's mind? And did, uh, I, did Hitler learn nothing from the winter in <laughs> in Russia? Well, we're back to the story of Hess. Hitler was absolutely flawless in his decision making until Rudolf Hess took that flight to Scotland, hmm. and after that, he made one disastrous mistake after the other. The invasion of North Africa, which fell to pieces, the the you know the, that was that was overstretching in every possible direction. The leaving the invasion of Russia too late in the year, they had soldiers freezing to death in their thousands at Stalingrad. He lost it after his dear Rudy left him, and that's that's so interesting. Hitler basically sat down. Uh, he wanted to make peace with the with the British. He did not want to fight with them or the French. That's right. He respected the British, didn't he? Yeah. Well, he was. He he been there, and he you know he had an Irish uh, he had an Irish, an yeah. Irish in law in Liverpool or something. <laughs> yeah, uh, and Hitler was probably there, and probably in Dublin. There was even a, a nephew called Paddy Hitler. It's just I know oh, he's in New York or something. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and they still exist. The family. Well, uh, it, it's a it's a funny thing, but um. Getting back to Hess, apparently um, the reason that they sort of giggle and laugh in the Nuremberg trials when Hess walks in is because it's not Hess. But uh, that's an interesting view. I can't prove that, you know. But, well, um, well Hess, had been, uh, Hess had been changed. Uh, David Irving, has a, in his book on Hess, basically said that Hitler called, uh, called Hess in and says, look, you're an aristocrat and you, you're the same blood as these British aristocrats. They would go back to what I was saying. Well, the royal families of Britain and Prussia are the same family. And he said, can you go over there and influence them? Uh, and, he had the blessing of Hitler? I thought he was outraged. Oh, he did. He did. He had Hitler's blessing. Hitler provided him with a specially customised uh, Messerschmitt aircraft and everything. Wasn't it, um, wasn't it a, a Storch aircraft? What's that? The, 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 the Hess aircraft that flew to Britain, was. I thought it was a Storch. No, it was a Messerschmitt ME 109 that had been converted to a two-seater. Oh, okay, right. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, he'd never fly. He took, he took some rudimentary flying lessons. He flew that, make, that makes sense, actually. Forgive me. Yeah. That does make sense because a storch is just pfft, all right for landing quickly in a field. but um, Well, he that's... didn't land. He turned, When he got to Scotland, and this is what shows it was a conspiracy, well, as he, there was, he was approaching Scotland, uh, there was two radar stations that picked him up and message to the British High Command that a German aircraft is basically performing very strangely. See, it's so much like so many things we hear like from 9-11 and everything. A, an air, a German aircraft has been picked up on radar flying in a strange pattern just off the coast of Scotland. 
if it was any other aircraft, they been shot down. Yeah, they would have sent the RA off, the, the Hurricanes and the Spitfires up and blasted out of the sky. Mm -hmm. It was he flew over to this guy's estate, turned the plane upside down, dropped at a thousand feet in his parachute, caught his leg, and then in full military uniform presented himself as a diplomatic attaché of the <laughs> German army. Yeah, it sounds like a madman, doesn't it? But he wasn't. Mm -hmm. And then when he went to, uh, when he was ta he was taken prisoner, they said that he was brought down somewhere in the south of England, probably around where you are, kept mm. in a house, and was given drugs, and they so they say, including LSD, and they never <laughs> broke. Him. They never broke him. And the Nuremberg trials, they could they, because they claimed he was insane, and also was he acting oh, at the Nuremberg trials? Was that Hess? No, that's that's what Himmler said. Himmler mm. was laughing. Himmler was laughing. Well, I heard that they were laughing like, because they 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 they, they were you know, they thought that uh, Hess was replaced by this imbecile, you know. Yeah, well, he was acting like an imbecile, but they said it was a max. He was a magician. Magicians know when to change personalities. Mm. Yeah. And so he was he was locked up in Spandau prison under an enormous expense. And a chap, I know, and it, even that's bizarre. He was the prison guards were told not to talk to him because he can hypnotize them. And this went on till he was an old man and was eventually murdered by an American GI in order to build a shopping center on the site. But uh, yes, <laughs> it, it, I believe that that Rudolf Hess was one of the most important figures in the history of the world. He was Adolf Hitler's handler. He was a supreme occultist. He had, I think he was a, he was a pure blood German, Prussian aristocrat. He was no different than the aristocrats in the UK, Germany. He was one of them. That's why he stayed alive. That's why he was taken care of. He, pro for all we know, he could have spent World War Two in luxury in a palace somewhere, eating swans. You know, yeah. you don't know for certain. It's all. It's just that. Oh, he was locked up for the war, and then we stuck him in Spandau prison after the Nuremberg trials. Well, I often wondered about the significance of Martin Bormann. He seemed like a big, dark Illuminati sort of handler. Oh, big time, and especially well, especially his uh, relationships with South America and his contacts. Yeah. Also, for such a young guy, for such mm -hmm. a young guy mm -hmm. to have the power and influence he had was incredible. Yeah, incredible. Mm -hmm. And, and then um, you have, but all the aristocrats survived. Oh, but, like, but it's Steve. okay. It's okay, Thomas, because they found his bones. It's the mystery is resolved now. They found his bones in Berlin, very recently. Yes. Yeah, and it's also that oh, he went to say he definitely got to South America and Albert Speer. Oh, the spear. If anyone should have been yeah. hanged at Nuremberg, yeah. I mean, our, our men's minister, the guy who, who sent tens of thousands of Poles and Italian slave workers that are deaths building the V weapons, the real weapons, uh, in underground factories inside mountains, just like in, you know, just yeah. like the witch kings in their lair, he gets off scot free because he's an aristocrat. He's tick he ticks all the boxes for a very slick psychopath, very high ranking. Uh, secret society member, a smooth and, talking, well, well, oh, fair, slick as you like. He may as well have been educated, a genius in many ways, but yeah. a devious, very devious, genius. and and an architect. Yep, like a grand architect, you know. Well, he had a psychedelic experience after seeing Hitler speaking for the first time. After he saw him, he just thought he was just some. He thought Hitler would just be some dirtbag from a uh, some working class dirtbag from a. Uh, from Austria or Munich, really, at the time, went into the same speech into a, into a talk. Literally came out of the talk, out of Hitler's speech in a supernatural haze, and went into the forest in Germany as they always do, and encountered the spirits of his ancestors, and said, actually quoting, he was lifted off the ground by an unknown alien force, and when he returned to Earth. He decided to devote his life to Adolf Hitler. I mean, this hmm. is magic. This is magic on a vast scale. Fascinating. Um, we were talking about the the, the, um, the rationalization for the Aryan race in particular, and it, you mentioned it goes back to Tibet and everything. This is quite worrying because for many years I had a, 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 a overwhelming. Um, super urge to go to Tibet and studied everything about it. I, well, that's a bit worrying. But um, Alan Watt mentions in his book um, the hermaphroditic, uh, hermaphroditic agenda, the androgynous hermaphroditic agenda, 
cutting through volume one. He mentions um, that the Thule Viral Society, 1871, as you say, taken from a novel by Bulwer Lytton about yep. a subterranean beehive like socialist utopia ruled by superior beings who had mastered the so called vril or life force. You're talking about these angelic beings, super beings. They performed healing and telepathy. And this coming race combined the political, political ideals of the order of the Illuminati with Hindu mysticism, theosophy, and the Kabbalah. Their yep. symbol was a swastika. It is a yep. Masonic emblem that links Eastern and Western occultism. Freemasons also use a beehive as one of their important symbols. The beehive is not something we see in Nazis, Nazism, is it? No, because that's more theosophy. And although... In the Vatican, yes, but... Uh, theosophy did have an, a, an impact to a small degree on German occultism. The real thing there was Ariosophy, which was a Germanic Aryan version of it. So that's probably why the beehive part was left out of, because it had socialist inclinations. Yeah, I mean, uh, there were a lot of uh, similarities that Hitler admitted himself between the, uh, the Soviet socialism um, and the National Socialism of the Nazis, and so much so that they had to distance themselves from that once they became actual enemies or supposed. Oh, the, well, the, the baton that was passed to the next witch king was the one given to the Bolsheviks. And that's why I can't stand or can't, uh, can't get over people saying, oh, Hitler was wonderful, he stood up against the Bolsheviks, the Nazis were... The, they were the same thing. It was the, the yeah. same plan, the great plan of the ages where the aristocrats develop two sides and use it to create change in the material world. Yeah. And you look at this day, the power brokers in the world are still Germans. Spielberg, the movie they maker, the Rothschilds, Frankfurt, they were the prince bankers of Frankfurt, the Bavarian Illuminati still exists to the Grand Orient Lodges and the Knights of Malta, the, the Bill Gates, the Gates family, Germans, Kissinger, German. Yeah. I mean, the European Union, German. Brzezinski, Hungarian. Yeah, probably, but he could be of Germanic background. Yeah. yeah. But it just goes on and on and on. And yet everyone's looking for, they're looking for some guy who looks like a rabbi. And they forget to notice that every one of them seems to have German surnames. And many of them who were even Jewish, such as the goldsmiths, and such as the Rothschilds, converted and are, were agents or part of Germanic aristocracy. In the case of the, in the Rothschilds, they were the, the, the princes of Frankfurt. And this is like, and this is, this is the elephant in the conspiracy living room, are these Prussian, Germanic, Teutonic knights, who are the ones behind it all, who are still here today, from skull and bones at Yale, to the European Union, to Agenda 21, to the Green Movement, causing change in the material world. And people have to realise that the biggest change of all is coming. I'll be talking about that in my tour of England next week. Yeah. With the, 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 a new version of the Prussian aristocratic model being launched by Bill Gates, a German, a German aristocrat. Let's separate the German people from the German aristocrats because they're two very different entities. Mm -hmm. With his common core. Oh, yeah. A new version of reality, <laughs> gaslighting, the future generation with mathematics so they cannot relate to the previous generation. And the transhumanist, alchemical technocrats have them forever. It's still going on. It, this is, like you said, it's not... A, it didn't begin and end. It didn't start at the, the pub on the town in Munich on September 12, 1919 and end on April 30, 1945 in, in Berlin, in a bunker. That was just part of a continuum, a gigantic experiment on the human mind. I've just discovered here, I just found what I was looking for, the Aryan... The word Aryan, Indian history calls the ruling race of Persia and India Hurrians. From this yep. we derive, from this we derive Aryan. Hurrians. And the 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 era in Ireland, Alan which Watt. was named, 
in the 1930s sounds very close. In fact, there was quite strong in the Fianna Fáil government of the 1930s with people such as Todd Andrews who brought, that's why so many German Nazis escaped to Ireland, aristocrats after the war, such as uh, Otto, Gins, Otto uh, Scorsini. He was living openly in Dublin among Irish high society for years after World War II. Scorsini, he was very close to Hitler, wasn't he? Yeah, he was most considered yeah. most dangerous soldier in Europe. He actually rescued Mussolini from his captivity. Yeah. You, you can actually see his home movies of when he was living in Ireland on, on YouTube. But uh, he, at the same time in Ireland, there was lots of Germans who brought over to Ireland to build their electrical system to design it. This, so national socialism even affected us. And Ireland changed its name to ERA at that same time. It's all so similar. There was a beauty. Yeah. There was Aryan a, era. A, yeah. There was a, an occult bureau in Berlin that the Nazis set up and they were doing, they were deciding to do to everything, everywhere else in Europe what they happened to the Germany. Didn't we have, the, didn't they, we have they, the blue shirts in Ireland too, the blue shirts, the Nazi blue movement? Blue shirts, yeah, which are the yeah. current serving party, Fianna Gael, the same party. The blue, mm -hmm. the blue shirts are still in power now, as Fianna Gael, who are actually a wing of the German Christian Democrats. But, you know, it never ends. It's just, oh, God, great. people, wait, people, conspiracy theorists, start really looking, mm -hmm. looking beyond what the, the, the what you've been given mm -hmm. to the next le level beyond it but uh as i was saying uh, they picked the harp symbol this will interest you patrick mm. the harp symbol as the magical as the swastika of ireland which was uh implemented on the irish constitution in 1937 uh, the harp symbol was also used by organizations such as the irish republican brotherhood yeah and the and also the, 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 the Churchill Druids, not the real Druids, but the Order of Druids, which was the, the sort of like Aryan yeah. aristocratic magical society That's of the right. Churchill family. Churchill, Churchill, Churchill was a Freemason and a Druid. And yep, pro, and pro Fabian. Him at a Druid festival, and there is the harp behind him. Pro Fabian, yeah. yeah. yeah so, you know, we've, we're all getting it up to Jacksey. And we're getting it up. These aristocrats have everybody looking at every these 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 blue blood Anglo Rom well they're not Anglo I would say Britannic Romano Prussian aristocrats yeah. are sitting in their palaces their ball boardrooms but they but they had to give up all their manor houses and the uh, national trust have to take it over they're poor they're, they have to have they the have, yeah. they have to have the masses. Uh, Riding around, spending money and, and looking Germany, at their houses and Germany, now. And Germany is a federal republic, even though all the royal titles still exist. Even though a German prince caused chaos in Edinburgh recently by spewing all a German princess, her serene highness, I can't remember her full name, in Edinburgh recently by spewing out all racial epithets outside a nightclub. They're still there. They're yeah. just hiding behind the scenes and they're pissing themselves laughing making us and while we're, we're blaming everybody else except them how many other than me how and if you criticize them you're racist yeah how many other people in this scene are actually pointing out that's the prussian aristocrats none that was the thing yeah uh, they, they, they're more likely to believe they're lizards from another planet force when the obvious answer is in front of their eyes. If you study European history and the grand European Western project, it's always been pulled by the descendants of the Teutonic Knights. It's as clear as day, and it's never, ever changed since. And yet it's completely missed. I've always been aware of their influence. It seems to be a common thread running through um, these subjects of... Um, the black nobility, and as you say, yeah. the Venetians, and uh, uh, Machiavelli covers it perfectly in um, how it was run then, and that's how it's run now. And, yeah. the, and the, the fake democracy that these secret societies have given the world, and uh, we're all running around voting for this next bad guy and the next bad guy, and uh, democracy has always been a sham, you know. But they're bringing, they're bringing democracy to Iraq. Well, democracy came out of a thing called enlightened absolutism, which was developed by Frederick uh, the First, 
the father of Frederick II, which was the belief that the Enlightenment and the growth of modernity was okay once the king still had the final say. <laughs> yeah. You can be free, but under my, only under my terms. Yeah, exactly. So the, the corporal punishment that they inflicted on physically on the Russian people, they were also inflicting on them psychically as well. So as, as we become older, do you find uh, more insights flooding in quicker than usual, sort of rapidly, more rapidly as you become older and, and wiser? Uh, I don't know if I'm becoming wiser, but I'm definitely be learning to see more clearly. That's right, yeah. I would say that's the case. I, I think I subscribe to the Nietzschean idea that the tr oh, because all language is metaphor, there's no such thing as absolute truth as such. There's only opinions that matter, consensuses that form into facts. But facts are facts, right? Yeah, but facts are facts. But at the same time, too, my impression of this history would be completely different than a Prussian aristocrat. Well, it, it's, say, it's, it's, they would say they were on a noble quest to perfect humanity. It's astonishing um, this um, this this world you built up around uh, such scant resources that aren't available to the public. So it's it's an astonishing insight to be able to, to view this from the Teutonic point of view, the aristocratic point of view, it um, it's key. And that became more apparent to me living in Ireland since the Lisbon Treaty. Complete fix, literally, yeah. Literally since then. They're going to fix the Scottish vote as well. Yeah, yeah, sorry. Ger German bureaucrats under, the, under Angela Merkel herself, an aristocrat, Russian aristocrat, big communist, coming to Ireland every second week to tell us how to exist, and that's what. And I and I said, how the hell did these German bureaucrats have this kind of power and arrogance? And that's really where the beginning of Valpurgis Night started for me. Well, was Angela Merkel telling the Irish people how to vote and where she got that arrogance from? Mm-hmm. But they are working to a, a one world government, a one world order. I mean, is it going to be a, um, is it going to be a, a complete magic world once they finish their great work? Is no, it going to be, it's going to be. It's going to be a soulless dead. It's geography. going to be a blackened earth if they get their way. It'll it'll just be an, it'll be like living in the most horrible shopping mall. It'd be like living in Dubai with even less soul. That's what they're looking for. At the end of this age, I mean, it'll, it'll begin again if they, if they clear out the, the bad contaminated blood and they rule yeah. the world and... Uh, they have another treaty, yeah. Has all this ha it makes you wonder if all this has happened before, an age ago, an eon ago. Is, well, it, is it cyclical, it's... cyclical? Uh, procession is this what Atlantis was is Atlantis a metaphor for something like that in the past it's something I've wondered myself I often wonder about if they've had the technology they have today I often wonder if that's existed before oh well they definitely had high technology in, in the past I mean it's the only way they could have built some of those in ancient monuments this, this is particularly they definitely had high technology in terms of seafaring and uh, construction and engineering absolutely they did they had to have had and that would be suppressed you'd keep that um as alan watt mentions you keep that power by suppressing the technology and just releasing it in in, in dribbles you know to the public yeah, you, here's you, your new you, iphone yes. you this is cutting edge when really it's like obsolete what they're probably using you know if you're bored of hypatia you're bored of library of alexandra now you get all the good texts out and you smuggle them off with a basket because you could wipe a generation, you could wipe history within at least two generations. So yes. nothing would exist before, and only their view of what they give you in education. You could do yeah, it. In, that, that you could do in it England. in two generations. Yeah, that happened in England with the Tudors. That's what the purpose of the Elizabethan uh -huh. Court was. The that's first, why the first openly, the first openly Rosicrucian court. Yeah. They, they, oh, they would have not. They, they would. They were. They were to rebuild and reframe. To use a common purpose term, 
they were reframing. <laughs> they were reframing with John D, Christopher Marlowe, Francis Bacon, and the rest of them. They were oh, and whoever William, whatever William Shakespeare was, mm. the history of Britain. Yeah, the British Empire. Yeah, in order to launch forward this mercantile empire that would rule the waves by trade. Yeah, by trade and slavery. Mm -hmm. And magic, John D. And magic, John D. Now he he was he was apparently uh, in touch with these interdimensional beings. You know, or, you know it's rubbish, of course, but this is what they believed and. Like the um... well, it's it's not necessarily rubbish, Patrick. It could be real, but it could be aspects, undiscovered aspects of the human psyche we have not, we don't fully understand, but they do. I consider it a, a mind control job on the top elite themselves. Whoever's above the top elite, it, it's almost um, this spiritual power exists. This magic is real. These interdimensional beings and demons will take you over and possess you and stuff. It may just be technology. It may just be technology, or it may be just be ourselves. An aspect of our psyche that as, as yet is undiscovered. Which, the, the, which the mysteries of the East would have been familiar with. The Druids would have known about it. The Teutonic Wizards would have known about it. It would explain why the Druids were, were wiped out like the Jedi, you know. AD 61 in Anglesey by Suetonius Palamas, who launched a massive logistical uh, effort across the Menace Straits to get a few wizards. Why? Because they had powers that he wanted, or he, they fe or the Romans feared. Okay, let's assume that these uh, this magic is real, or it's a part of our uh, psyche that we haven't that's been suppressed by the elite over generations. Um, intergenerational suppression, I suppose. Let's assume that it's all real. Um, to defeat this evil, you must avoid, one must avoid uh, becoming evil by employing this, their same tactics of studying magic and wizardry and spells. And You don't want to go down that road, but you also don't want to be, or perhaps you do, one doesn't want to be um, a full-on Bible-smacking guitar playing crazed Christian um, yeah. totally putting your faith in a Christ figure or um, so is there a middle way to defeat these people without becoming like them and using their uh, ways oh, 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 we'll never defeat them it's over they've won well, we can, oh, I mean I'm not, that's not negative I'm just that's defeatist you. <laughs> no, it's not. It's it's it's. It, we now know we can become the proles in 1984 and live outside the system. Ah, uh, see, I, I I I don't accept that. Okay, fair enough. That's just my opinion. I I don't see any hope for the future in terms of a revolution unless they're planning to destroy themselves. Well, there must be something in us that uh, they fear the most, and yeah. um, good people have it, and they can't use it, so they must. Do away with us all, ninety well, percent at least. Well, yeah. Well, that's what it is. We what we have is the ability to transcend their fear and their trauma-based mind control. Those of us who are in the awakened community, and they do fear that. Except we're well, we're our, we're, our cut off. Is, we're cut off our, from communicating with ourselves and and forming um, know. You know, a, a valuable opposition. We're we're disseminated amongst. Yeah, there's no, we have no tribe. They've broken up the family unit. There's no one to stand up for us. We, we're, we're, our attention span is less than a fish, and that we've been dumbed down. And they've destroyed their, a lot of the enemies before they're born. And the DNA is screwed. And yeah. we can't organize. That's why. No. That's why it's a, it's a, it's a big agenda of the elite to wipe out the middle class because they're educated. They're they're eloquent. They can. They're intelligent. They can. They have resources and money. That that's the only threat that could happen. One of the only yes. threats, you know. And the well, family and the, and the family unit. So. Well, that's why our job is to spread the knowledge. Is to exactly. We have to be like the the Gnostics <clears> or <throat> the original Illuminati, the pre the Illuminati of the pre uh, Renaissance, who kept alive 
just like the the people who kept alive the Nordic and the Gaelic sagas, our job yeah. is to keep alive what we know, what we've discovered, and pass it on to other people in the hope that we can create some kind of chain reaction where it becomes so much common knowledge that they basically give up their plans and move on to something else. So are you, you're not hopeful for the future, or do you see... Uh, oh, I, I'm very hopeful you, for the future. You, I, 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 you, I have every you, intention of <clears throat> having a great life along with the people I love and I care about. Mm -hmm. But in terms of in terms of them being brought down, I don't, I don't see that. I don't see that can ever happen now. I think we're gone. It's gone too far now. I do sense a spanner. Uh, I do sense a chink in their armor. Uh, they're so oh, yeah. they're so dependent on this dark magic, which can can be defeated by good. Um, they're so dependent on that. I see that as a. I see them as weak. Well, dark magic gets instant results. That's why it's. That's mm -hmm. why it appeals to psychopaths. Earthly results. Yeah. Yeah, powerful, immediate results, and that's why it seduces even ordinary, good, decent people, because it happens so, it happens much easier than, the than 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 good magic, than the magic of empathy and compassion, and that's why it's so seductive to them. But it's almost like plutonium; it's very, very dangerous. Volatile, and, yeah. Yeah, volatile. It'll like, destroy uh, you. Yeah. Nitroglycerin, and mm. we can we can hope that they actually. They actually destroy themselves with the spell. That's that's the best we can hope for. Thomas Sheridan is an author uh, from Ireland. Author and artist Thomas Sheridan. You can check out his works on thomassheridanarts.com. And um, we haven't got to a few subjects that we wanted to. Um, but Patrick, would I ha would I have time to read a page or two from the book that kind of sums up what you just mentioned about maybe there's forces behind them? Absolutely, yep. yep. It'll, it'll only take it'll only take a minute. Of or course, two, absolutely, my pleasure. I I, yeah. I could talk for another hour. You 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 bomb away. I just don't know what your recording uh, limits are, but anyway, this is page. Two I can tell you, page. we've got uh, oh ten minutes recording time left there. Perfect. So this is page 248 to 250 of Valpurgis Night, Volume 1, 1919 to 1933 by Thomas Sheridan, which you can pick up on thomasheridanarts.com. There's a little little thing on the side there saying bookshop. You can get it through there. I just want to read this final section. It's near the end of the book, and it kind of brings everything together, what you were just saying about is there a force behind, behind them? That's even, you know, that might even, you know, damage them. And maybe there is, and it, this brings into a character that appeared in the late 1930s. He was a hypnotist and a stage actor, and his name was uh, Housen. And I'll read you to, I'll read you about his relationship with Hitler and what happened. Hitler, Hess, and Goebbels had now worked together to craft a persona of Adolf Hitler as Germany's last chance. All the tricks and techniques of the craft were now called upon, as the psyche of the German massives were at their most vulnerable and in desperate need of salvation. Astrological charts and predictions were consulted as to when Hitler should deliver specific speeches on certain topics, as well as the manner in which these speeches were to be delivered. They employed a mysterious figure from within, the, from within Munich occult circles named Erich Jan Hanausen, to coach Hitler into a more dynamic and wizard-like orator. Although Hanausen was claimed to be of German royalty, but turned out to be a Moravian Jew named Hermann Steiner Schneider from Vienna, and very possibly also a theosophist, reveals an intriguing relationship between the two in terms of what Hanausen was really up to, as well as acting as an acting coach, Hanusen was a practicing astrologer, clairvoyant, fortune and fortune teller, and most significant of all, a hypnotist. Possessing a brilliant and dynamic personality, he educated Hitler in a dramatic 
in dramatically staging meetings beyond the current level of Nazi events, and also how to deliver speeches in order to express the most powerful dynamic effect in the style of an actor on stage. All magical ritual is about building up the energy to a level of absolute concentration and anticipation and then delivering the charge towards the objective. By all accounts, Hanussen developed an amiable rapport with Adolf Hitler, as Hanussen claimed to be that he came to know Hitler through all the cult circles in Munich back in the early 1920s. There was much whispering of the coming of another Charlemagne and a new Reich, he later stated. So that tells us right there and then that there were forces even behind the National Socialists who were planning the thing from day one and coaching all the main players towards what happened in 1933 at the Nuremberg, 1934 at the Nuremberg rallies and on into the Second World War. And if that, if that gives us hope, that's it. That these operators and these handlers who are above the control system, running the Bolsheviks, running the European Union, eventually decide to change their tactic when enough of us wake up. That may happen in modern times, in our time. Well, it's a great time to be alive and to observe it, it and then to look back at history and then apply that framework to the present. It's never been a better time to be alive and do that. Thomas Sheridan, it's been an absolute pleasure. And I, I look forward to uh, the next instalment, uh, the second and third volumes, possibly the fourth volume in this. You've touched on a massive subject and it's uh, it's been an astonishing insight into history of the Third Reich and their occult powers and the driving forces behind this New World Order, which Hitler spoke about in a speech. Yep. And um, we hope to speak to you again soon, and we wish you the best of luck with all your projects, your new projects to come. Likewise, my friend, and it's been a pleasure talking to you again. I hope to see you next year. Well, it's goodbye from the Free Truth Show. Till next week, and catch up um, with other interviews from the Free Truth Show on the Free Truth Show channel. And don't forget to check out thomasheridanarts.com. And um, it's good night for me, your host, Patrick Lynch, from the ancient kingdom of Wessex on the south coast of England. It's good night, and fight the new world order with every fibre of your being. Good night. <laughs>